Okay, I want to um, use the rest of our time together this afternoon to talk a little bit about our economy and some of the um, efforts that my administration has made and will make to better support our small businesses. Uh, I, as I have said numerous times in these press conferences, the amount of suffering that's going on in Rhode Island's economy is, um, it's really unprecedented, certainly in, in my lifetime and in most of our lifetimes. Um, folks are struggling. We have tens and tens of thousands of people out of work, many people going to bed at night wondering if they've been temporarily furloughed or are they ever gonna get their job back? And I hear from you, I've talked to many of you, lots of small businesses wondering, can we survive? Can we get through this? How are we gonna get through this? And I want you to know that we hear you and we're gonna do everything we can to, do, to get you back to work if you're out of work and to help your business survive if you're a small business person. There's a lot of discussion everywhere. You know, you hear it all the time, this phrase of the new normal. Let's get back to the new normal. And as I've said often, I don't love that term because I want to be better than the old normal. You know, the old normal wasn't that great for a lot of people. If you didn't have a degree past high school, if you were a person of color, or you are a person of color, if you, um, you know, were a victim of systemic discrimination or racism, the old normal uh, wasn't working so great for you. Chances are you were working one or two jobs, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, barely getting by, and worried about your future. And so my, as we move forward, as Rhode Island claws its way out of this crisis, as we together in the weeks and months ahead do the hard work of standing up this economy from the ground up, let's aim to do better than the old normal. Let's be more innovative, more equal, more resilient, and more committed to every single Rhode Islander to make sure they have access to the job training and education that they need to get a good job, that small businesses have access to the support they need to transform their business to be more technical and digital so they can be successful as the economy changes, and let's provide the support to people that they need, like housing, like child care, like transportation, to actually hold down a good job and get a good job in the first place because they have the skills and hold down a good job. And let's be ever mindful that, that um, the economy is really changing. And COVID has put that on full display. I have said it so many times, but you know, I say it all the time. When I get out of high school in the late 80s, most jobs in Rhode Island only required a high school degree. You could get a really good job. That, those days are over. So we have to equip our workers with the skills they need to be effective in this new economy. And so um, as I look forward to where do we go from here, that's my lens. I started as your governor at a time when Rhode Island had the highest unemployment rate in the country and together we rebuilt our economy. And now we're gonna do it again. I want you to know I am confident we will do it again. If you're out of work, I want you to hear me, we're gonna get you back to work. If you're out of work and you worked in retail and you only have a high school degree and you're really stressed out because you think your job's going away forever, we're gonna, we're gonna be there for you. We're gonna get you retrained and we're gonna get you a new job. If you're a small business hanging on by a claw, we're gonna reach out to you immediately and get you some relief, but then we're gonna stick with you to rebuild. If you're a mom, a single mom with a couple kids and you need to get an education and you don't know who's gonna take care of your kids so you can get job training, we're gonna wrap around more services to job training so it's more effective so you can get back to work. 
We have rebuilt this economy before together, and we're going to do it again. And it's not going to happen in a day or a week or a month, but I'm going to stick with you until we get back to where we were and better so folks get to work. Now, some of that is the immediate. I'm going to make some announcements right now with how we're going to use our stimulus monies to immediately get cash out the door to people who are struggling. And then, and then some of it is long term. You know, later this month, I'll get together with the legislature. We're going to put a budget together. We're going to put bonds on the ballot. We're going to go forward next year. And we're going to keep our eye on the prize of rebuilding Rhode Island and standing our economy back up in a way that's more resilient, innovative, and equal. Uh, at this point, I'm planning to use about $200 million of our federal stimulus money to provide some of that immediate relief for education, training, housing, small business relief, uh, 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 helping nonprofits, helping child care centers, just to, just to help folks keep the lights on and get through the immediate crisis. And we're going to do our best to target it. That amount of money, by the way, is just a, it's not even a drop in the bucket relative to the need. So we have to be smart about it and we have to target it best to, to the folks who are hurting the most. So here's what we know. We know that one third of our unemployment filings so far have been in three industries, food, hospitality, and retail. That is not a surprise. Everyone would know that. Um, and retail's been, brick and mortar retail has been struggling already. A few years ago, we put the Amazon tax just to help have basic equity so these small businesses here could survive. Any business owner knows, even in good times, if you own a restaurant, it's lean margins and tough to keep the lights on. And during the crisis, it's that much harder. And if you're a business owner of color, it's that much harder. So, um, my Commerce Secretary and I have had a discussion, conversation with small businesses through, since May, really, just to understand how can we help you most. We posted a survey on reopeningri.com and we've asked you, small businesses, who's struggling the most, how can we most help you? We recognize that um, we're not going to be able to meet the full need. So the question is, what's the most effective way we can help you now? Here's what's happened so far. So far, just over 17,000 local businesses have received $2.3 billion in funding from the federal government through uh, the federal PPP program. So that's $2.3 billion. That's, uh, twice as much as the state's getting in our CARES Act funding. In addition, we've created a loan program just specifically to help hospitality and, and micro-businesses access federal funding. And we've provided technical support um, to over 300 small businesses. We also provided small businesses with over 500 new laptops, uh, PPE, disinfectant solution, and access to a suite of Microsoft programs to make teleworking easier. Um, despite all of that, billions of dollars of loans, Herculean efforts by the Commerce Secretary to be there, the level of struggle is significant and real. So today I'm announcing that we'll be making an additional $100 million investment to directly support Rhode Island's smallest businesses. $50 million of this money will be made available in the first round of funding to provide direct cash assistance to assist businesses with reopening expenses, plexiglass, cleaning supplies, an online reservation system, touchless pay technology, um, as well as just the fixed cost of rent and utilities. We hear from so many people, we need a hand keeping the lights on, literally. So that's what this is for, immediate relief. 20% of the funds will be set aside for minority-owned businesses. The grants are available for up to $15,000 for each eligible Rhode Island business impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. Um, application for this funding is going to be available within the next couple of weeks. Uh, the team's working as fast as possible to get it out as soon as possible. 
and the framework for this, the details of how we think about it, who's going to be eligible, where you can apply, are going to be online later today at commerceri.com. Um, and then once they have the application completed in the next couple of weeks, they're going to put the application online. Our goal is twofold. Get the money on the street into your pocket as fast as possible, but also to do it right. I will say this. Um, there are a handful of other states who are ahead of Rhode Island in doing this. A handful of other states who have already put some money out the door to small businesses. We've talked to uh, Commerce Secretaries, I think probably talked to all of them. There have been, uh, it, this is not an easy thing to do. To administer it is a challenge. In some states they put it out the door but no one, not many people applied because they geared it to the, in the wrong way. In other states there have been administrative challenges. I'm not criticizing in any way. Everyone's struggling. I'm just saying we're trying to get it right and learn from them. So our goal is to get this out the door in the next few weeks but also to get it right and to all of the small businesses who've been spending time with us to help us structure it properly uh, and frankly to the other states who have helped us, I want to say thank you. This funding, the 50 million, is specifically designed to support small businesses that were hit hardest during the crisis. So restaurants, caterers, Rhode Island businesses that have 20 or fewer employees and who have lost a significant portion of your revenue in the past few months. So you're going to have to show us that in the period of COVID, you've seen a serious drop in your revenue. Um, if you're a restaurant, a caterer, a hospitality, et cetera, it's not going to be hard to show that. I want to say this is a first step. This isn't, this isn't it. This is the beginning. Um, in the coming weeks, we're also going to be making $26 million in additional stimulus dollars available for critical small business support services, and that would include nonprofit grants, technical assistance to businesses, and uh, a quote unquote repositioning program that'll help small businesses restructure their business models. We've heard a lot from small businesses that, yes, they need some money to keep the lights on. But they also need a hand to, to adjust their business model for this new economy. How to sell things online, how to allow people to work from home, how to, there's so many ways that businesses need a hand to reposition. So that's what this 26 million is specifically designed to do. Furthermore, if we, we want to put this out fast and see how it goes. If we quickly run through um, the, the first round of the 50 million, then um, we can replenish it. We may learn that we have to adjust it, in which case we will do that too. The other thing is, um, while many businesses are reopening in some capacity, there are many businesses that are closed without a clear path forward. So if you're a travel agent or a big event planner, and this repositioning program might be perfect for you to think about how do you get back on your feet? How do you, how do you reopen? How do you reimagine your business to get yourselves back on your feet? I'm also pleased to announce that in addition to that 76 million of the CARES Act funding, we're also going to be making available an additional 20 million um, to small businesses from the Small Business Development Fund, which the General Assembly authorized um, during the last legislative session. And we are also working with the Federal Economic Development Administration to pursue an additional five million specifically for our tourism industry. So the combination is quickly out the door $100 million to small businesses. The Small Business Development Fund was an initiative that was not initially um, targeted to help our smallest businesses to recover from COVID, but uh, after the pretty incredible work of our commerce team and an a great negotiation, they have figured out a way to transform that into something that is responsive to the small businesses dealing with COVID. So I want to say thank you to the participants in that Small Business Development Fund 
and I want to push you, lean on you, urge you to get that money out the door as fast as possible to our businesses who need a hand. And we'll do anything we can to, to you to make that happen. Uh, the Commerce team's also been working with stakeholders in the minority business community to develop initiatives that will support entrepreneurs and emergence, um, emerging enterprises of color, and we're going to have more to say about that. So I would say, first of all, a big thank you to Stephen Pryor and his team at the Commerce Corporation. Um, second of all, to small businesses. You've had, like, you're going through something you never would ever want to go through, and help is on the way. And this is the beginning. And as we get this up and running, as we get the application online, as you start to use the program, I, I expect we'll hear a lot of good feedback. Thank you. We can keep the lights on. We can keep going. And also I expect we're going to hear feedback around, could you make it a little easier? Could you change it this way? Could you change it that way? Could you put more money into it? And so we want to get this off the ground. We want to keep hearing from you. And we want to continue to come back um, with more and different and better options. Finally, uh, I do have to say thank you to our federal delegation led by Senator Jack Reed. Um, and just say thank you to Senator Whitehouse, Congressman Langevin and Cicilline. The fact that I'm able to stand here and put forth $100 million to our small businesses is a direct result of their hard work in fighting in Washington for the people of Rhode Island. And so um, I just have to say thank you. And to small businesses, hang in there. And uh, I hope this is the beginning of what will be your resurgence as we climb out of this crisis and come back to being even better, stronger Rhode Island.